Hello and welcome back, dear esteemed guests and subscribers. It is me, of course, Suki Strategy here, and today I'm very delighted to review the latest DLC for Age of Empires 2 called The Dawn of the Dukes. And as a reminder, I have reviewed the other DLC for Age of Empires 2 on the channel, aside from the Lords of the West, which I kind of bought way too late, so I didn't decide to review it, but my two cents about it is, it didn't really have that great of a campaign. Now let's talk about Dawn of the Dukes, which is most likely the last DLC before the release of Age of Empires 4, which I'm very excited to uh, talk about on the channel once it launches and doing some videos about it. Now, Dawn of the Dukes is priced at $10, which is the same as Lords of the West, African Kingdoms, and Rise of the Rajas. Out of these four DLCs, I definitely recommend African Kingdoms and Rise of the Rajas because in terms of the content, there's just a lot more in Deduce, not just the civilizations and the campaigns, but also they add a lot more assets in Rise of the Rajas and African Kingdoms, like new animals, uh, new buildings obviously, and new maps, and things like these. In terms of like new assets that were added in Lords of the West and Don the Dukes are kinda minimal, and also the terms of how many factions get basically added in. But let's kind of talk about the features which are being brought in this DLC. So there's two new civilizations, you have Bohemians, and then you have Poles or Polish, whatever you really want to call them. And then there is three new campaigns, uh, Jancicka, uh, Jedwiga, Algirdas and Kestutis. And this is, um, so basically Lithuanian and Polish and Zeke. Uh, based campaigns and the cool thing that they did with these campaigns is that there's some some type of a continuity uh, With these uh, campaigns here and they kind of follow a timeline So you should be playing them in the order of Algirdas, then Jedwiga and then Jan Sitska. And that is kind of like the correct order to play it Obviously, I didn't pay attention to the year dates and I played it in reverse for example, in the Jadwiga's campaign, I think there were a lot of like new interesting elements that were introduced. Uh, for example, like signaling bases which you would be taking over. So there was like inherent like new types of strategy elements or new elements uh, brought into the campaign which we really didn't see before in previous uh, campaign maps. At least I can't remember anything like this on the previous um, missions. So I, I've been really much enjoying the campaigns because there was diversity, there were, um, you know, defending maps, attacking maps, ones that you kind of had to patrol over with a certain limited uh, amount of troops. And then you had a couple of like small time-based missions or parts that were timed at least, not like a full map. I really hate uh, when you have to play the campaign map in a certain time, like you have to destroy the wonder before the time runs out. I remember one map on the African Kingdoms, which, you know, I just had to resort to codes because I couldn't beat it. Uh, that's how bad I am at this game. <laughs> but overall, like, in terms of the new civilizations, Bohemians and Poles, I, I think they were, um, you know, pretty good. Uh, the Hussite Wagon was a very interesting new unit, which changes probably a lot of the meta game. I would argue, in, you know, uh, in a competitive play. That's just my two cents. It, it's a very interesting unit because it doesn't do uh, vast amounts of damage, but it's very mobile and it's pretty tanky at the same time. And then you have the Hoofnice, which is an uh, upgraded version of the Pombard Cannon. That's also uh, pretty nice to have like a tier 2 unit there. And then Poles have this like a new type of a building for farmation, uh, farming. Um, you know, I think it was an interesting building. And then we have the Obuch, which is this sort of a brutal infantry man who has like a warhammer of sorts, like with a sickle of sorts. Uh, I don't know what, I guess they're called warhammers. And um, I think like overall uh, there has been some complaints about that there are some missing, uh, you know, unique castle models for certain factions in the game still. And so there's been a bit of a complaints about like, you know, where are these models at? And I guess they could have like updated some of those stuff into the game and this patch, but I think it's... 
safe to say that they're probably going to be doing some type of a patch in the future, probably uh, focusing on the Balkans, so perhaps the Greeks could be, maybe we have a fashion for uh, some Scandinavian, Sweden, Finland, or even like uh, Russia that, that could be introduced. I still think there's a lot of like um, room for new civilizations, so I don't think that this will be the last DLC. Um, in terms of like the new audio, I think they added like two new musics for these factions. Um, I didn't really pay much attention to them, but I guess they were okay. But I noticed on some of the campaign dialogues, there was some weird like sound mixing, which was kind of bad. It's like middle of the sentence or not middle of the sentence but once after the first sentence ended and then the the unit starts to talk about the second sentence it's on a, significantly on a lower volume so it's harder to hear I, something that i just like picked up in some of the missions but in terms of like you know the campaigns i think there's a good synergy here the lithuanians and the poles and the kingdoms that they had a teutonic order obviously plays a big part in that storyline and then you have this continuity over the three um, campaigns and you know characters that you're gonna be seeing in two of the same campaigns and stuff like that so I think that was pretty cool and I just really personally did not like um, the campaigns in Lords of the West at least like two of them were pretty bad and boring or I just didn't really I wasn't really interested in the storylines there and obviously we had the Age of Empires 4 coming out soon and it will be very interesting to see how much they are going to be differing civilizations from each other. And they kind of have done that with Age of Empires 2 with the DLCs a lot where the civilizations are becoming more and more different because they introduce a lot more units uh, with these DLCs and like siege towers and things like these which are like bounded to certain civilizations and now you know hoof knees and these types of things are being introduced so I, I like that kind of like diversity in terms of the game elements that are being introduced but overall I mean if you love the campaigns you're gonna be loving this DLC as for like multiplayer only people, I mean, I guess you have to play the faction that is strongest or something. So, I mean, that's something you might have to entertain here. But, I mean, yeah, I think there was a valid criticism about like, where's the new music, where's the new assets, and, you know, could they've added some new PvP maps or something like these into the game as well alongside with the DLC but if you're a campaign player in terms of the hours that you will be getting from all the 16 missions I think this is a good valuation for ten dollars because that's often that I usually price my experience is how many hours I get for the buck is there replayability and things like these and obviously like with some of the previous campaigns you had these missions where you could choose to side with this faction or side with that faction. So there was also options with certain of the missions which allows you for replayability in those missions. Which is very nice so in case you want to try it on harder level and try different strategy here. That also works out. But hey, thanks for watching in case you want to see more strategy content, RTS content in the channel. Now is the time to fucking subscribe guys. Until then, whenever that may be, this year, next year, I hopefully will be seeing you soon, soon though. Thanks for watching, see you soon.